One of the first things you have to decide on with a, a, a musical is why should there be songs? You can put songs in any story, but I, what, what you, which I think you have to look for is why are songs necessary to this story? If it's unnecessary, uh, then the show generally turns out to be not very good. Composer and lyricist Stephen Sondheim was the most important figure in American musical theater of the last half century. Will it be? Yes, it will. In shows like West Side Story, Gypsy, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Farm, Company, Follies, Sweeney Todd, and Sunday in the Park with George, which won the Pulitzer Prize in 1985, he created songs essential to the stories and changed the nature of the Broadway musical. I like to change styles. That's one of the things that appeals to me about stories is if I've never done anything like it before. It has to be some unknown territory. It's got to make you nervous. If it doesn't make you nervous, then you're going to write the same thing you wrote before. We sat down with him in June 2008 to talk about his own story and his accomplishments. What is it about the theater that attracted you so that made you want to spend your career, your life, working in it? It was very simple. It was when I was 11 years old, I met Oscar Hammerstein, and he became a surrogate father, and I just wanted to do what he did. And he was a songwriter for the theater, so I became a songwriter for the theater. If he was a geologist, I would have become a geologist, which is, I'm sure, an exaggeration, but not much. Sondheim wasn't known for top 40 hits, but one of his songs, Send in the Clowns, from A Little Night Music, rose to the top of the charts. But where are the clowns? Quick, send in the clowns. He wrote it specifically for Glynis Johns, one of the show's stars, and it remains without a doubt his most popular and financially successful works. Wrote it during rehearsals, wrote it uh, essentially overnight. Glynis Johns could not sustain notes. So I thought, I gotta write a, a song with short phrases. And if they're gonna be short phrases, what are better short phrases than questions? So the whole idea of, isn't it rich, are we a pair? Question, which ordinarily would not occur to me, came into my head. And once I've gotten that, once you get the idea of questions, then it's quite easy to write. Isn't it bliss? Don't you approve? Once you get the notion of, isn't it rich, aren't we, aren't we schmucks? Not to, not to be together. I mean, are you, uh, you get that tone? You can write, that takes a very short, short period of time. Send in the clouds. Stephen Sondheim was born on March 22nd, 1930, to upper middle class parents on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. His father manufactured dresses and his mother designed them. But his childhood wasn't all privilege. His family life was difficult, with a distant and remote mother and parents who didn't get along. When I was 10 years old, my parents divorced. My mother got custody of me, and she bought a place in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, as a sort of summer residence. And I was an only child, uh, and uh, because she was a working woman and also a, a, a celebrity hunter, uh, she knew the Hammerstein slightly, and they had a, 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 a son my age, a year younger, Jimmy. And so uh, we became friends and companions, and um, Oscar obviously realized that I had some gift for uh, songwriting, so he encouraged me during my teen years, and in fact taught me. And I brought him a show when I was 15 years old that I thought he would want to produce. Uh, uh, it was a show about my the school I went to, George School, and I was uh, very disappointed to find out that he wouldn't produce it, but I wanted to be the first 15-year-old on Broadway with the show. But he said, if you want to know what's wrong with the show, I'll tell you. And he went over it page by page, starting from the first sentence. He treated me like an adult instead of like a kid. By the time the afternoon was over, I really knew more about the nuts and bolts of writing a musical than most people learn in a lifetime. Hammerstein and his partner, 
Richard Rogers were fresh from the success of Oklahoma and Carousel when they hired the teenage Sondheim to work on their next musical, Allegro, in 1947. His hair is fuzzy, his eyes are blue. Unusual for its day, it followed the life of an everyman from birth to age 35. It was their first failure, but it would influence Sondheim tremendously. It was experimental, and so that incurred in me the whole notion of doing experimental stuff, which I've done one way or another most of the shows I've done. Hammerstein laid out a course of education for his teenage protege, suggesting he write four musicals, each in a different style. The first one being an adaptation of a play that I thought was good. The second being an adaptation of a play that I liked but was flawed, that maybe I could feel I could improve. The third, some, something that was a non-theatrical story but adapt it and make it theatrical. And then the fourth was to write an original. And that's exactly what I did over a period of years. In the mid-1950s, when Sondheim was in his early 20s, he wrote his first professional show, Saturday Night. The moon's like a million watt electric light. It, shines it was headed to Broadway when its lead producer suddenly died, forcing the show to close out of town. The ambitious young composer was still without a credit, but then came an opportunity to work on Broadway, albeit as a lyricist only, and not as a composer as well. It all began when he bumped into a renowned playwright and librettist, Arthur Lawrence, at a party. And we fell to talking, and I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm about to start on a musical version of Romeo and Juliet. And I said, uh, I said and who's doing the score? He said, Leonard Bernstein. I said, who's doing the lyrics? And he said, Oh my God, well, I never thought of you. And he literally smote his forehead. And he said, in his typical Arthur Lawrence fashion, he said, I didn't much like your music, but I thought your lyrics were, were kind of good. I said, all right. He said, would you like to come and play for Lenny? Now, I had no intention of just writing lyrics. I want to write music, but I thought, chance to play for Leonard Bernstein? Why not? So the next morning, I played for Lenny. And Lenny said, I will know within a week, and I'll let you know. And I said, thank you so much, Mr. Bernstein. Sure enough. A week later, the phone rang, and he said, would you like to do it? And I said, uh, let me call you back, because I didn't want to do just lyrics. And I called Oscar, who was, you know, my advisor on everything. And um, I said, you know, I don't want to do this, but he, Oscar said, look, there, you, you have a chance to work with, with very gifted professionals on a show that sounds interesting, and you can always write your own music eventually. He said, my advice would be to take the job. And that's why I took it. And uh, I learned a great deal. Maria, I just met a girl named Maria, and... Sondheim didn't always agree with Bernstein on how the lyrics should be written. I knew that uh, there were great dangers of pretension with this whole show, and the only way to write the lyrics was to underwrite them and make them very simple. You've said over the years that you're not really happy with the lyrics you wrote, even though you're so popular you are. No, they know. No, they know. They're very self-conscious. Lenny wanted, Lenny wanted everything, the lyrics to be very poetic, but his idea of poetry and my idea of poetry are simply not the same. I mean, you know, I was 25 years old, and um, he was a big, big force, and Lenny kept pushing me to be very fruity. Today, the world was just an address. That's a pretty fine line on paper, but you, the boy from the streets has seen that. And I've often quoted, you know, I feel pretty. It's alarming how charming I feel, says this girl from the streets, and she sounds like Noel Coward. It's alarming how charming I feel. I do like something's coming. That's my idea of a poetic lyric in the sense that it uses imagery. Something's coming, I don't know what it is, but it is gonna be great. And I like the Jet song, too. When you're a jet, you're a jet, all the way from your first cigarette to your last dying day. But you know, the song's like somewhere. I mean, that's deeply embarrassing, so. West Side Story got mixed reviews when it opened in 1957 and didn't win the Tony Award as Best Musical. But it was revolutionary in its combination of music and dance and in its searing plot. Sondheim had made his first mark. He still longed to write both music and lyrics on Broadway, and it looked as if he was going to get the chance 
with a new musical based on the early life of the stripper Gypsy Rose Lee. You'll be great. Gonna have the whole world But the show star way. objected. Ethel Merman was already signed to play Rose, the mother. So it was all set, and then Ethel Merman said uh, she would not have me as a composer because she had just done a show called Happy Hunting with two young writers, and it was a, a flop. And she didn't want to take a chance on an unknown composer. And she's perfectly happy to have me do the lyrics. So I said no. And um, Arthur tried to persuade me. And I said, no, I really, I really want to write music. This is nonsense. Again, Oscar stepped into the breach and he said, do it. He said, there are two advantages. First of all, he said, you have the experience of writing for a star, which is different than just writing a show. I mean, you're tailoring material, not only for the character, for the character as played by that specific actor or actress. That's one more. He said, secondly, it's six months out of your life do it. And that's exactly what happened. We wrote that show in about four months, we wrote very quickly. That's probably the quickest I've ever heard of a, of a major Broadway musical being written, but it wrote, as Barbara Streisand would say, like butter. Honey, everything's coming up, roses and daffodils. It's considered one of the best, if not the it best, is, absolutely Broadway is. musicals it, of it all is, time. It is. I think it's probably, it's the culmination of that era that told musicals in, in chronological order, in, in a linear style. It's, uh, you know, I'd, I'd certainly say it was the best. In 1970, Sondheim teamed up with director Harold Prince to write his breakthrough musical, Company. Just as Gypsy had been the culmination of the era of the narrative musical, Company broke new ground. It fractured the narrative, told the story in a nonlinear manner, and opened the way for similar musicals like A Chorus Line and Chicago. Sondheim and Prince followed company with more breakthroughs. Follies, A Little Night Music, Pacific Overtures. They were revolutionary, but mostly they weren't financial hits. It takes an audience a while to get used to new ways of storytelling. Uh, there are exceptional plays that break with the tradition, like Death of a Salesman, and are hits at the same time. But usually, if you bring a new way of storytelling to the stage, it's, it's you know... Oklahoma is the perfect example of taking a chance and is a gigantic hit, but that is not the usual case. These are probably the worst pies in London. Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street, is considered by many to be Sondheim's best and most powerful work. A gruesome tale of death and revenge, it shows the composer at the peak of his talent. Is that just disgusting? It was full of blood and gore and controversy, and though it too didn't make money in its original run, it has often been revived, has been performed by opera companies, and in 2007 was turned into a movie starring Johnny Depp. You want to talk about dark? Well, it's not so dark. It's really kind of funny, that show, you know. I mean, nobody takes it seriously, you know. It's... It's not dark the way, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a melodrama. I don't think melodramas are dark. Anyway, but I can, the point is, yes, there's a lot of blood. And there's a lot of comic relief. There's no doubt about it's it. It's not about comic relief. It's the yeah. fact the attitude is not a real attitude. It's, they're all cartoon figures. I mean, it's an operetta. You know, it's a, these are not real people. And they're not supposed to be. They're supposed to be big, larger than life. But so, isn't there a real sense in it about injustice and evil? <sighs> If there is for you, then there is for you. I know Hal always thinks, always wanted to, thought it was about the Industrial Revolution. I thought it was about scaring people. Um, you all know Steve is a great dramatist and our greatest living composer and lyricist. In 2010, Sondheim received an ultimate stage accolade. I cry easy. <laughs> a Broadway theater was renamed in his honor. This is so much more moving uh, to christen a theater than Stephen Sondheim as opposed to the, you know, British Petroleum Playhouse. Or... <laughs> when you think, if you think about this, what would you like your legacy to be? Oh, goodness. Um, oh, I just would like the shows to keep getting done, whether on Broadway or in... in regional theaters or in schools or communities, I would just like the stuff to be done. Just done and done and done and done and done, you know, it's a, um, that would be the fun. 